master's student there in particle physics sector from the Institute of Physical Physics. <coughs> then he moved to Miami and he did PhD in nonlinear sigma models in Miami University. And then he switched to biology. He's a Renaissance man. He, 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 really, he really does everything. In particular, he collaborates with, with me and Christoph Meissner and now Roger Penrose on, oh. on, on, on looking for circles in the sky. But today, I asked him to, to, to talk about, about uh, super, super uh, resolution, resolution of, 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 of microscopes. And this was the chemistry, this was the Nobel Prize in chemistry in the year 2014. And there were three people. I will just talk up, up so he will be talking. Okay, that's it. It's about, yeah. Actually, that was no real price in physics. In yeah, but I was like, in disguise. He, he just stopped me that I wanted to yeah, say. Yeah, I will, I, will, I will explain and maybe a few words at some point why it's in chemistry, not in physics. Uh, uh, I didn't use yeah, actually. Uh, the word super resolution, I use the word bioimaging, uh, I, I will talk uh, uh, a little bit more than just super super resolution. What is bioimaging? Is it enough if I put some, some lip or some, some, some plant like that in the microscope? Do I have bioimaging? Uh, I will also explain what, what, what are the major goals of, 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 of uh, that uh, concept. My eyes are also doing bioimaging. Bio yeah. So, uh, at the general until, level, until I'm alive. At, 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 at so general level, we, we, we can classify everything to this to, 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 to this uh, to this notion. But so I will just try to, to try to try to try to make it not not so wide. And I'll, I'll, I I divided my talk uh, in like two parts. The first parts will be successes. Uh, the second part will be attempts uh, with uh, not so many successes. Uh, in breaking the diffractive barrier, uh, this what is what 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 is the image? The image uh, is uh, uh, a dendrite that is that is a part of, of a neuron with dendritic spines that uh, uh, make contacts with another another neuron, which you cannot see here because only one only this one was fluorescently marked, and uh, this one. This is this is this is already from the super super, super resolution microscope built by Stefan Hell. Uh, the scale is that more or less this is this, this is about half half of the nanometer, so you can you can see the details uh, around uh, 100 nanometers in this picture. Let's start with some historic <coughs> remarks, historic time. What was the uh, major breakthrough in uh, microscopy. The main major breakthrough in my microscopy was first the invention of a microscope at the end of the 16th century, obviously, uh, by Dutch guys, Hans and Zacharias Janssen. Around 85 years, they needed to wait for the first observation of, of, of bacteria and uh, blood cells. And, uh, the new invention, uh, again Dutch, Anton von Leeuwenhoek, and uh, the realization that we can not uh, uh, go with the, the resolution uh, of uh, microscope arbitrary small was was obviously around the, 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 the mid of the of the 19th century. But the first the, the, the first the first exact formulation was was. Famous formula by Ernst Aber uh, that, that uh, just correlated the resolution of the uh, microscope to the wavelength of the light and the, the numerical aperture of the, of the microscope. This is this is everything optical, and then uh, it's uh, it's around the same time, but uh, it, it's it, it, it's an important. Uh, very important thing uh, for, for, for the contemporary neuroscience and for the, all of the observations uh, is uh, Golgi staining. Golgi staining is the staining of neurons, so they can see that can be seen under the microscope with a mixture of potassium dichromate and silver nitride. 
Why, why is it so important? Why, why everybody in biology talks about Golgi, about the stain? Before, before the neurons in brain were stained in this way that we could see all of them. We couldn't distinguish single because the staining was, 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 was marking all of the neurons. And the neurons and the microscope, they are so densely packed, one on the other, that the brain seemed as a, as a homogeneous mass, something like a, like a, like, like, like a porridge. Uh, and uh, uh, the gold, gold just naming allowed to, to mark only, only single neurons, only like a very small subset of neurons is marked, and uh, that allowed us to study uh, the, the structure of neurons in the details, to, to, to realize that neurons are like independent uh, units of, 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 of for, for for, for, the, for the brain structure. And this opened uh, actually the, the field of, of, of neurobiology. And uh, Santiago Roman in Cajal first observed, observed the details of, of, of neurons, described them, and uh, uh, it's, it also uh, made some, uh, some successes in improving the state method. Just look, look at those two pictures. These are, this, this, these are his drawings. This, this is his first picture under the microscope he took in 1888, and these are his drawings of the dendritic spine. So here probably there is something like uh, his imagination uh, that was extracted from this picture. But and then I will just come back to the uh, first image I was having. This is this one, yeah. So this is super resolution, more than one century ago. This is what we have right now here. This is what he. It works. Well, we did it quite similar. We didn't we didn't go too too too, too far with we, we, we discoveries in the brain. Then 1933, the beginning of of, of electro, actually the invention of first uh, electron microscope and the beginning well, of actually it's unfair because meanwhile we took those neurons and we had the beautiful pictures of what is inside of the neuron. I mean, in, in, meanwhile, we had the electron microscopy. Meanwhile, we, yeah, I mean, between those two pictures, I mean, the word is not based on light on the, the word is, the yeah, yeah, I would just, there are yeah. other wavelengths. There are other wavelengths. Wait, 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 word is not based on light. Electron microscopy before the war, but just after the war, there was an explosion of, 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 of research based on electron microscopy. So, wh why, why do we bother with light? Why do we bother with this diffractive barrier? Why do we bother uh, with just uh, all, all the stuff if we have uh, uh, so uh, not comparable resolution of, of a few nanometers with electron microscopy? There are, there are several reasons. There are several reasons, and that's uh, where bioimaging comes, uh, this word, uh, in, uh, in, into the play. First, if you look at the same structure under the electron microscope, it's, it, it's, it, you see, it, it's hard to analyze. It's, 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 it, it, obviously, the resolution is much greater, but it's just a single section. It's, 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 it's really hard to see what's what, what, what inside. Be you, you can, but why? Why? If you are an expert. Yeah. If you are an expert. For me, because... For me, each of those pictures is equally completely... Yeah, for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the optical for the optical microscopes, you've got a, a great number now, not only gorgeous stains, but, 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 but thousands of different types of, of, of uh, immunological staining, of genetic commodifications that allow to express the fluorescence uh, uh, chromophores uh, in, the, in, in, the, in, in, the, in the biological samples. And there are different, the different possibilities to, to, to colorful stain the, 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 the pictures. While for the electron microscopy, we also have, have, have it, but first, it's, it's, it's much more limited than, than uh, for the, uh, for the for, for what, 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 what's possible to do with the light. This is the first reason. The second reason is because that you are asking completely different questions using electron microscopy and using the lighter. Yes. The question is not the colors, the question is the questions 
the questions are the questions, scientific, yeah, scientific questions, but some structures under the, uh, without the steady, without the microscope, you cannot distinguish. For example, here you can say using the light, I have uh, such and and and, and 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 such here, here, here chemical compounds in this part of, 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 of the neural, and here I have something very different where the, there are no distinguishable in that uh, using using the electron <coughs> microscope. So you are right. Uh, if you look at those, they are, it, it supply different information and now it's very popular to do correlated microscopy. So first you look under the light microscope, then at this, you use exactly the same sample, you cut it, you uh, look at the, uh, under the electron microscope and then you superpose both images one onto the other. That's something that that's happens right now. The second reason for the, for the light microscopy is that uh, under electron microscope we cannot observe life samples. And now everybody would like to see in vivo imaging, uh, if we uh, living cells on a... The, 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 the Goldie staining kills the... Yeah, the Goldie staining kills the cells. As stuff. beautiful as the electron microscope. Yeah, but there are other now stainings that do not kill the cells. Well, so well, basically is then you can use not the electron microscope by the atomic force microscopy. And if you have a high quality electron atomic force microscope, then you can look at the surface of a neuron. And yeah, but and you can look only on the surface. But for example, now you, you cannot look into the brain, into the living brain, and now people would like to, to look into the living brain. Uh, the mouse has, has a window in the skull, and through the window they look at the living neuron under the microscope. Our parliament will soon preclude this kind of cruelty. We go to Puerto Rico. <laughs> or just it will be some underground research. Yes, I guess. So there are two, two, two reasons, there are two things that, that, uh, that current bioimaging is, is, is wrong. First, uh, a large variety of, of, of the war of course to see, see different different structures. The second one is, is to do light imaging. In 1969, uh, the first uh, confocal microscope has been constructed that allows fluorescence imaging uh, in this way. The confocal microscope is just the ordinary microscope with the exception that the, that the light is focused uh, onto the single spot by the laser and then it scans from the single spot. So it's, it's, it's a scanning microscope, not, not the whole field. It's, it's looked at the moment only just one spot and we have, we, we, we have some mirrors that, 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 that move, we, we scan all the sample this way. This is the advantage that the light, if the light is focused only on one spot, there is like no uh, fluorescence out of, of, of the plane, because if we, if we illuminate everything, we will have light for, 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 from everywhere of the sample. And here only, only we have one spot that, that, by the way, improves us some of the resolution and uh, allows us to collect nice, the images, pictures, and uh, in in 80s and uh, 90s, because of, of, of the availability of different fluor chrome fluorophores, uh, the, the, this this research exploded, and uh, for a moment everybody forgot about the uh, the electron microscopy. Now now we, now it's coming back uh, for the reasons I will I will tell later. And now let's come to the last 20 25 years. In 1990. The two photon microscopy has been constructed. The two photon microscopy is the uh, microscope where uh, actually you, you, you use two photon, two photon absorption to have to, to, to have a, a, a single photon returned there, and that allowed us uh, somewhat to increase the resolutions uh, to 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 to, uh, to make that. Uh, focal, focal the, the, the spot that, that, that was uh, illuminated by the laser smaller because of the of the of the nonlinear non nonlinear uh, fluorescence. Then the first experiments with four pi microscopes were, were conducted. These are two objectives: one looking from the top, the other was looking from the bottom uh, to, to to increase the resolution. And then actually the first uh, microscope, the first real super resolution microscope by by Stefan Hell in 1999, was invented and then uh, uh, the photoactive by localization microscopy followed. In last year we know that uh, these three gentlemen won the Nobel Prize in chemistry. Let's start with 
with the invention of Stefan Hell. The idea is obviously to make the spot from which we observe the light smaller. How can we do go beyond the diffraction barrier? We cannot by any way focus the light on a smaller, smaller spot than that's dictated by the diffraction, by the, by the abyss limit. Uh, the idea was to use uh, so-called deflection of the emission that is to use the secondary beam that is distinguished, extinguished, distinguished that, is, that, that is depleting the light, uh, that is uh, not a lot, using the, this mechanism. We have, ordinarily we have uh, excitation, uh, there is some non radiative relaxation here, and then there is continuous emission that we, that we are observing as, as, as fluorescence in, in, in some larger wavelength. Hannes' uh, idea was to use the second laser, the second beam that was uh, uh, performed, that was uh, leading to the stimulated emission in somewhat different wavelength that was not observed. That is, whenever we have an overlay of two beams here, around this donut, the, the uh, fluorescence will be <coughs> by, 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 by some way much more lower. And uh, there is, there is some, some misunderstanding. I, I, I often saw that people were thinking that STEC uh, works in this way, that this excitation beam, that, that the beam we're using for observation cannot be made the, the, the spot cannot be made arbitrarily small by the diffraction, but they say, okay, we're using the flashing beam, and then here they draw a donut with a small, very small uh, dot with a very small dark uh, spot inside, and we say, okay, uh, the deflation beam can be made like uh, a donut can be made, uh, made arbitrarily small uh, here, uh, and th that's why uh, we actually have uh, uh, some diffraction oh, in uh, I can follow why. Um, uh, you know, is, is this secondary beam of the same wavelength? No, the secondary beam, beam, the secondary beam is of, of, of a different wavelength. Arbitrary or it's a razor? It's... Uh, must fit the levels here. Must yeah. fit the levels with the, with the transitions. Mm -hmm. So. I will just maybe explain on this picture. This, this is this is the first. So then it could be the same beam. Mm -hmm. what, what's the difference? I mean, from the picture, I cannot understand what's the no, difference. Let, let him explain. Look on, look no, on he's already picture. explained it. No, 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 no. Yeah, let me explain. The, the first beam. Whenever, whenever you let's forget about the secondary. <laughs> If we, if we have just one beam, uh, we'll have just ordinary, ordinary uh, fluorescence. And then we, 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 whenever uh, we add the secondary beam, we allow for some transitions. The secondary beam is allowing for a stimulated emission in a different wavelength. So whenever we have the secondary beam at some level, the fluorescence from the original beam will not occur because the secondary beam will induce some, some transitions from the level, is it? Mm -hmm. yeah. By combination, in effect, this primary beam... By combination, this primary uh, beam... This, uh, if this is, this is, this is, let's, this is the, this is the the outcome. This what is the virtual This is what you eventually see. This is the primary beam. This is the primary beam uh, that you use for excitations. And this is the secondary beam. And the level the, the beams are much so that the fluorescence <coughs> actually occurs whenever the intensity of the primary beam is higher than the secondary beam. 
When the when the when the intensity of the of the deflation beam is higher, you do, you don't have you have only only fluorescence in, in, in the other region. You don't, don't, don't do not do not observe. You don't you don't have the fluorescence we would like to see. So even both beams are diffraction limited. Even they are they are they are not so not so narrow. Uh, the fluorescence will occur only in this region whenever this, this primary beam uh, is, is larger than the secondary beam. Mm -hmm. And that's why they, in this way, they can be overlay of, of, of two beams uh, allow us to, 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 to have the... Oh, there is a price to pay because even this uh, squeezed fluorescence dot, it will be weaker because there is some suppressing factors of this... There is, beam. yeah. This is the price to pay, and this price to pay means that if, if, if it's weaker, we need to apply much more laser power, especially for this for this depletion beam to observe the sample. And then and the sample starts to boil. And sample yeah. starts to boil, and we start photo switching of, uh, for the, of uh, in this way that we have so, so called photo bleaching. Oh, the sample yeah, starts to boil. Yeah. If we if we uh, observe it uh, for too long time, we may just uh, uh, <laughs> just uh, destroy the sample. And uh, obviously, to have the same problem coming, we need we need have much, much, much really. It's like I think <laughs> two orders of magnitude uh, uh, the 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 amount of light. Uh, what is what is the usual the usual uh, way uh, to create the donut was was what was to induce the optical. Optical vortex uh, um, to, to employ in the in, in the trend of the microscope. <laughs> uh, a digression. That, does it mean that if we somehow magically manufacture two, two diffraction uh, gradings, somehow shift it a little bit, then by superposition of the two we can get uh, 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 fringes which are much thinner? Yes. This is another microscope. <laughs> This is another microscope, but they do it. Okay, I have understood. This is another concept. This concept in the uh, the, the the first microscope was were built using this plate and then creating the vortex. And obviously, uh, we need to work as much as possible to have this this, this this donut smaller. Now they're using special light modulator for the reason that it will be clear in a, in, in just in a while. To, 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 to produce this donor. Okay, may I have a comment? Donut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they call it, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, donut comment. is something that has three dimensions. Yeah. But here it's a beam. It's a beam. You will just show, you will just see it in, in three dimensions in a moment. There is a question. There is a question. Okay, yeah. It's a comment. This actually is a, what you have said is a variation on on a technique that is known in spectroscopy, this is called saturation spectroscopy, where one uses essentially two photon transitions to, 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 to uh, get resolution of the order of natural line width as opposed to Doppler width in, in a gas. Okay, so I understand that this is very nice, but in some sense was known in atomic physics. Yeah. Uh, it's just application. Application, yeah. It's just the application. So no points. This is this is this is the comparison uh, uh, of, of some images uh, by the inventor. And uh, uh, what here you can see you can see two channels. The limitation of that method <coughs> is that uh, Usual, like the, 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 the classical confocal microscope, we can we can have few excitations beam. Uh, of, we can observe in to take in, in, into few different regions of the of the spectrum that we we can have up to I don't know several several colors, especially doing the spectral unmixing. Here here the the, the limitation is the, uh, mostly like up to two two, two colors that that the, the, the spectral I overlap too much to to, to distinguish. More than that, we, we, we cannot have a. So, what, what are these green spots? Uh, the green spots, I think, are some uh, uh, synaptic terminals of the of the neurons, the, some protein in the, in the synapses. So, which, which one is better? The right one. The right one. The right one. The right one. <laughs>
That's a more risky. I mean, it's a risky. It's a risky. It's a risky. It's a risky. No, no, it's blurry. It's blurry. <laughs> <laughs> the red one is depends for what yeah. purpose. It depends yeah. on what information you're looking for. Well, depends what information you're looking The other, the next idea, with, with the photo switching, was based on the concept that if we have one, just one, one molecule, that's emitting the light. That's, we know that's a, a, that's emitting the light, that's the point. That's the point emitter. That, 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 that's, I don't know, one nanometer, ten nanometers, it's much beyond the resolution. We will see in the microscope as a blurry disk, as a, as a, as a blurry disk. So this, is, this is the diffraction limit. But, we can, we can just fit, fit, fit some Gaussian to it and we can quite well, if we, we collect and enough photon, enough number of photons, we can, we, can, we can determine what is the position of the middle, of the, of the, of, of, of the point. So we, we know, actually, we, we, we can do some diffraction, unlimited observation of, 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 of a single spot. There is not that thing in there. So we know where the spot is. We know where the spot is. Not and anymore. we know that, for example, we have our object is composed on, of the spots. Actually, they are the proteins we observe. <coughs> the, the image is, will be blurred by the diffraction. But if by some means we can observe one spot and determine when one spot is, at the second time we can observe another spot another spot, another spot, step by step, we can observe all spots and we construct limit, by the way. The only thing that, that and it was known for a long time, that we can, we can, we can an arbitrary image, we can, we can observe any, any atom and the, the problem was that, that, that everything is emitted light at, at the same time, we cannot distinguish it. And the, the idea was to, to, to find some, such transitions, such fluor force, that will allow us to selectively to observe, for example, only a limited number of spots per time, to observe this spot, this spot, this spot, this spot, to uh, generate that, uh, to, 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 to reconstruct the coordinates, and then at some point, after some time, another spot will be emitting light, so we observe this spot, this spot, this spot, and, and, and by this way to reconstruct the whole image. The question is how to how to uh, turn on the spots, the molecules on and off, so a certain molecule will, will be emitting light uh, for a certain period of time uh, and uh, then it will turn off and then another will one emit and so on. Yeah, it's and amazing because this is exactly, it corresponds exactly to observation of dense star fields in astronomy. You just need to know a point spread function, so a, a response to a single star, and then if you have a blurred of uh, image like that, where there is a superposition of uh, uh, optics and, and CCD detector responses from all stars together, you just have those peaks and you feed Gaussians to those peaks and you can separate them the, it again basically to separate stars. And so this is... Yeah, this is... So, the the so, so you say that telescopes do the same with microscopes, right? Telescopes do similar, similar things, yeah. Yeah, we, we can just not uh, turn on the stars and... and, and of course, it, it, the, the blurring then bubble, bubble. is very useful because if you see this image to the left of a single uh, dot there, uh, this uh, image, which con contains of maybe nine pixels visible, and there are many pixels which are also excited around, but they are not vi visible on this uh, image, that allows to determine the position of the dot to sub-pixel accuracy. Having such a measurement typically around to make uh, a determination of a position to one-tenth of the size of the pixel in this direction. So the the question was now the whole uh, the, well, was the just getting physics detectors to the same. 
Yeah, the, 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 the question was for, for chemistry, for biochemistry. Find, find, find us the molecule that we can turn on and off. The, the, the rest was pretty, pretty straightforward. And uh, the molecules actually are, are by molecules. I will just, I don't want to draw them independently the, the, the levels for them because it doesn't make too much sense, but it works this way. Let's say we have a ground state. Ground state. Here we'll have a, a metastable state, <coughs> metastable excited state, <coughs> metastable stable, and let's say that this is this is this is, this is some transitions that needs a blue laser, and then we have some another excited excited state. With different lifetime, we have here a set of set, set of set of set of different states, and this one uh, maybe a little bit lower. So the scale. This is the green absorption, and there is some transfers that are emitting like in a, in a deep infrared radiative transfers, and this is this is this is. Here are some fluorescents. And uh, this one, this one has a long lifetime. This one metastable has a long lifetime. Long lifetime. Everything here is a short lifetime. So what? In, in the microscope there are two lasers. There is uh, Photoactivation laser and redox laser. So, for, for the photoactivation for laser allows us to move uh, only at some subset subset of, of, of molecules into this metastable long living long life cells, and then we activate it only a small, a very small subset of them. And then we can we can we can we can observe the uh, the fluorescence uh, that happens here uh, uh, thanks to these short short lifetime states uh, using the another green laser. After after some time, everything will be distinguished uh, to the ground state, and we can we can turn off again the the blue laser, activate another another. Type another 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 subset of of of, 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 of the molecules and uh, redo the procedure and so on and so on and so on and uh, in, in, at, at some point we will collect uh, all the all the coordinates of the of the molecules and construct the whole. So you, so you feed this 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 cells you want to see with in terms of this of this of these cells. So these cells are just put into this this molecule. The molecule, yeah. yeah. If you want to do yeah. Watch, right? yeah. So it is like another type of gold. Yeah. Another type of gold is exactly. Okay. Exactly. The obvious disadvantage is that you need to, to, to repeat it uh, over over some long time to, 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 to record in the position of enough molecules so you can see the image. So this obviously it is the problem if you want to do any sort of live imaging because all the uh, all the thing will just move uh, during 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 the observations, and obviously what you did it's uh, uh, the more the the the, the, the position the accuracy with which you determine the the the, 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 the spot is, is 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 just one of the square root of the number of photons. It depends on obviously all of the. On the background, on the on the on, 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 on the point spread function, but the, the more, more photons you you have, the more accurate you are. And the same as maybe I'll just skip to the no, to the next slide because it won't be. Yeah. Now what about the the third dimension? Because this is only in two dimensions, and you were just saying that uh, is it is it a donut or is it uh, is it a beam? So this is 
this is what, what has been done with this pearl mask face and in three dimensions is actually a donut this is, this is, this, this is the cross section around the third dimension and originally it was a donut but this didn't allow us to the way we, but the way it is moving so is this taken at an instant of time it's it's average average over time pardon over time over time, over time. Over time. No, this is this this is the cross section of 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 of, of, of an average fluorescence over for different tires uh, in the Z. Wait, wait. This is the picture of light intensity, right? Yeah. And the light intensity is concentrated in this region. Yeah. So it's focused. It's focused. Focused. It's focused on a particular depth, and then. Uh, uh, the, also, the sample is moved in the in the third dimension to to to, to, to reconstruct the, the three dimensional picture. Okay, well, yeah, because it's easier to move the sample than to move the whole yeah. the apparatus. With the whole apparatus. The only oh, the only modification is that it was like a donut size. Uh, it didn't allow us to, to determine precisely uh, the, the the what 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 are the the, the, the coordinates towards 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 the third dimension. The point of perfection at one force and was 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 locked was was locked here along the z, z dimensions. Uh, and that's uh, the idea was to use different type of uh, phase mask. Mostly they are generated by a spatial light modulator uh, in the microscope beam that that that, that modified as the also, also we, we have the donut here, but also we have uh, like the lobes in, in, in the z direction that restrict us the, the fluorescence uh, on the top and on the bottom. And the, the, this allows us to improve the resolution towards the three dimensions. This is, this is, this is for the step concept. And how to use with this, with this PAN concept, uh, how to do the three dimensional image in the PAN concept. Uh, the first idea is to, to put the astigmatic <coughs> lens in the train, Pablo, can you? In the microscope train. So here there is an astigmatic lens, and what we what we observe that at some at some let's say at some plane, uh, it will the, it will not have a Gaussian, but will have an ellipse. And due to an astigmatism, if the if the if the, if the emitting molecule is, is somewhere deeper in our sample, uh, we'll see that the modification of the of, of the uh, elliptical axis, uh, the, the axis of the ellipse, and so on. This one, this one is on the uh, some level, this was on the other, and uh, on, on, and so on the other level. So to the ellipse, we fit we fit no Gaussian, but we we fit, we fit to two di two dimensional actually Gauss, and uh, from the <coughs> From the ratio of, of these two axes, we read out what is what is the z dimension, what is the z position of the of the, of the dot spot, of the spot, and reconstruct this image this way. Another idea is to use two detectors uh, without astigmatism, and depending on whether whether it's above the focal plane or below the focal plane, the spot. That the observed spot on one detector will be larger, on, and on the other detector will be smaller. And comparing the the ratio of two spots, we will we can determine also the the position of the uh, along this z, z dimension. The third the third concept for the super resolution that worked. Is so-called structural illumination microscopy, and uh, it's based on the concept that uh, if we have some some fine details in the image, and if we overlay, for example, a, a diffraction grating on, on, on that, we'll we'll we will see an effect like that. The, the, the moir, how do you pronounce his name? Moir, French. French. Moir. 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 Uh, effect, and. Uh, Actually, what's doing that is that uh, that. Why, why you wanted to say it in French? 
because it's a true French name. Not no French. The, the fine details, the fine details of the image, the high frequency details of the image by imposing a diffraction grating, by just projecting the diffraction grating on the image, are shifted to the to the uh, low frequencies, which is which is obvious by the convolution theorem. If we just make a, just ordinary multiplication, uh, then uh, in frequency space it corresponds to the convolution, which is non-local, which shifts us the high frequency to the to, 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 to mixes that high frequency with the lower frequency. And by this construction, by the, we can we can improve the resolution slightly of a factor uh, square root two, I think, towards one one direction, <coughs> practically. But that's here. Well, 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 was asked what we do if we have the grating and we have nonlinear nonlinear response again. This this, this stimul this is the possibility of the flash by 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 so by by adding nonlinear uh, nonlinear fluor force to this uh, to this to this construction, uh, we, we we can go uh, with the resolution uh, uh, beyond beyond this the, the, this this square root two, and it has an advantage that it doesn't require. Uh, that we, we, we can mix mix several several channels on the on the image. We don't have to to, to, to have them separate as as it's in the previous construction. In this way, the three three ideas that are commonly used that that, that worked. And now I will just go to some some attempts. The first attempt that actually produced some. Interesting results is to. So, so you want now to discuss the force method or what? No. 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 I want to discuss the methods that uh, worked only uh, in one case, for example, on one image or in. in that, that, that were very limited. The idea well, here, big, 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 big beyond so-called scattering plans is that if we have a strongly scattering sample we still have the property of the of the transition matrix if we, if we think of the transition matrix in a in a discrete way so in the free space actually not in the free space but, but, but for example like for thin thin of thin glass thin covering glass What's inside is what's what's on the top of the of the glass is more or less the, the, the electric field is, is, is just the same as uh, as on the bottom for the practical purposes if we if we if we think about the in, in discrete ways. But if we have a scattering sample, what enters what's what's on the top of the scattering sample is completely shuffled uh, if we consider the same uh, uh, the same field, the same phase. If we take into account phase at the at the observation plane, that the, the scattering is, is just, just just randomly mixing us uh, the, the, the 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 phase of of, of, of the script. I'm forgetting for a moment uh, the polarization. Uh, but there is something that we need to remember: that information is shuffled. It's randomly shuffled. But it's not lost. That is, if we know the transition matrix, if we know how 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 we relate uh, the what's what, what what's inside and what's outside uh, of the scattering sample, we can reconstruct the scattering matrix, and we can we can using spatial light modulator, we can choose such phase of the of the wavefront uh, that uh, we we just. Uh, uh, Inverse actually the scattering matrix, and we can by this way we can image by the through, through the scattering sample. The, there are two questions: how to how to measure how to measure the the scattering, how to measure the 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 the, 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 the so it's 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 called the, so called of in the inverse <laughs> scattering. How to <coughs> how to measure the the transmission matrix and the trick was the, let's say I have here a scattering. 
cut an example. And inside of the scattering example, I have a point, point emitter. I can have a microsphere. I can have a microsphere. And here I have the plane wave and possibility to modulate the wave by the spatial light modulator. I can record the fluorescence from the sample, especially if it's emit the second second harmonic. I can I can I, I can use the, the no, in the other direction. I can use the red light for excitations and I can record the second harmonic here, I can play some detector. Detector. So uh, actually, I got a kind of I'm probing. I'm probing what is what 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 is what is what, what's happening here. What is the amplitude inside the sunside spot where I, where I put the emitter, and I can also probe the phase. I can I can use the the plane wave. When played wave before before the detection, I can put through for some uh, also nonlinear crystal to have to have again the second harmonic, and I can I can I can, I can just uh, by, in, by 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 interference by interference method I can I can I can reconstruct what is the phase here. Uh, so I can I can I can record phase and the amplitude, and using spatial light modulator. What I can do, I can I, I can produce any, any arbitrary phase uh, of the wave, and by this way, the transmission mass has been measured. And once I know what is the transmission matrix, I can reshape the wave from by performing inversion of the transmission matrix that the light actually is focused here on the sample, on this, on this spot. Once I focus light here, I can, uh, what does it give me if I focus it? I can use so-called memory effect, that this is if I change slightly here the face of the wavefront, uh, the position of the, of the focus, of the focal, focal spot will be, will be, will be here shifted. And by shifting it in both directions, I can uh, I can scan some neighborhood of this spot and reconstruct the image. And that's what they what they did. This is the image of two nanospheres uh, using under the conventional microscope, microscope of three actually. And this is this this is this this is, this is the image under the the construction. So first we are imaging in the scattering sample. Second, uh, we have uh, the resolution. Uh, we have improvement of the resolution uh, because uh, we we are here. We are focusing. We are focusing from, from much larger cone inside the sample than, than, than from the from from the, the, the original landscape. Uh, what are what are the limitations of this method? It takes hours to do it, and it has to be very stable for the uh, interferometric. Uh, uh, Measurements. So even if I use the, I, I did, I repeated this experiment, and we're using as a scatter uh, a white paint over the glass, and it turned out that we need to dry the paint like for for for, for a week at least because uh, uh, just the, the, the it was still drying, and the, the the movements didn't allow us to measure the, the interference. So this is this is what we can do in, in in fixed samples. But in fixed samples in biology, we can cut everything into the slices, and it doesn't. Uh, so it, it doesn't have a practical meaning. Everything is moving. And just to give you, before, before, before the end, just a short, <coughs> short outline of the other ideas. The other, the other idea was to use a, a synthetic aperture microscopy 
that is uh, use the concept that, that, that were actually uh, uh, invented for, 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 for to, 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 to observe the enemy's uh, military structures in, in the 50s. Allies. These are allies. <laughs> Depends from what side you are. Uh, the best was the inventor. So it's on the enemy side or on both sides like this synthetic pressure brother in the 50s during the Cold War and now uh, now it has been applied uh, in the interferometry uh, in the optical coherence tomography. Uh, to, to, to look from the other directions and to reconstruct the image this way. This is before the reconstruction, this is after the reconstruction, and this is before the reconstruction and after the reconstruction. It, it, it shows some, uh, some improvement, but it's not, uh, dramatic. not dramatic. And uh, mostly, I think, interferometric stability and also the movement of the sample. Particularly that concerning the left side of the picture, you can buy much better postcards. <laughs> <laughs> without, without even having a play. <laughs> and the last, the, the last thing I just wanna wanna mention is the near field microscopy. And the idea is very simple to go beyond the diffraction. We just make a, 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 a nano nano size probe, and we just come physically physically with the probe, like, like, like with the atomic force microscope. The disadvantage is that we can only observe what's happening on the on the surface, uh, and uh, uh, that uh, most of the light is. Yeah, but that, that's no. not entirely true, because by the force, uh, atomic force spectroscopy, you can, you are technically looking at the surface, but the surface is sitting on something, and by exciting the acoustic waves in the sample, you can, you can. Actually, and by atomic force microscopy, scan what's happening inside. For example, this is how you measure the elastic coefficients of this cell. Right? Yeah. Okay. So it's not, it's not limited to the surface. Yeah, you observe light from the surface, but just excitation of the inner parts modify the surface, and that's. Uh, uh, that's what we are all the time doing in physics. We are asking the question and measuring some property, and whether we are doing it directly or indirectly, it's it's it's, uh, it's a secondary problem. I mean, uh, it's incorrect to say that this probe is restricted to the property of the surface. Yeah, sure. And uh, the the idea was to put some microspheres inside the sample. That were that were allowing us to to, 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 to to observe using evanescent waves from this from this microsphere, and actually they succeeded uh, in observing some 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 grid or, or some 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 DVD in this uh, uh, Blu-ray Blu-ray DVD using using this approach, but not, nothing nothing biological yet. And uh, just. As a summary, I would just want, want to mention that still we have practical limits of super-resolution super microscopes, which is first uh, longest, longest acquisition time. So we, uh, for the palm, we collect uh, images from an ensemble of, of, of molecules of, of spots. But for, for, for the other approach, we, we this is a scanning microscope stat. So if we scan with this with this nanometer accuracy, there is there, it, it, it takes a long time for, for scanning. Uh, the other disadvantage is the influence of the sample. Very high laser powers leads to photo bleaching or permanent changes of destruction of the sample. The next uh, limitation is uh, limited availability of fluor cores com com compared to what's, what's, what's available for the conventional microscopies, and also limitations on the number of different channels in which we may observe in different colors. Uh, and that's, that's the end. Any can use higher angular momentum states to improve the 
resolution because angular momentum states have minimized maxima on the in the azimuthal direction and there is no limitation here of any type that other introduced for example because the wavelength has nothing to do with the value of the angular momentum mm -hmm. to have uh, these interference fringes for high angular momentum we must superpose two beams with opposite angular momentum in that case in one case you have the cosine function uh, then that describes the, the visibility of these fringes and the angle under the cosine is multiplied by the value of the angular momentum Be because one beam has just the exponential dependence on angular momentum like in atomic optics it's e to the power of i m phi yeah. however when you superpose two beams with opposite angular momentum you have cosine and cosine certainly has the yeah. maxima and minima wow. and the visibility seems to be quite high biological questions which we are asking which require dramatically uh, the real biological questions actually are not so many there are some but there are not so many the, the major biological questions is the localization of some, some, some molecules in the cytos uh, that is where there where there, where, 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 where there's some protein in the uh, if we have this synaptic cleft, there is some presynaptic terminal, there is, there is a postsynaptic terminal on the dendrite, and here are some, 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 some proteins, either they are there or they are there. <coughs> this one may be considered by either they move out or they move in here. But that is, of course, we can probably not be done much more precisely using the electron microscope. Yes, but uh, first for the electron microscope, this procedure to prepare this, uh, the sample, it, it, well, it, it first is much more complicated. And oh, secondly, oh, well, it, uh, uh, those people who do it every day will not be clear that the preparing the samples for electron microscope is complicated. No, I, 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 I keep in touch with those people and uh, it's it's really for the control college much easier. But the second thing is to, to for the microscope to, 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 to see the positions of some, some proteins, we need to uh, like stain them with, with, with like heavy metals like uh, like gold, like mm -hmm. osmium uh, and that's the key. electrons like but, uh, heavy. Here you must attach these photostatics. What we what 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 biologists do? They they attach it but they also create genetically genetically uh, modified. modified yeah animals that are already expressing some 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 fluorescent uh -huh. proteins already there so 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 already they they just into in, into genes that they, they introduce some sequence so and we breed the samples instead of preparing yeah, yeah. <laughs> what we but this one, yeah, you, 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 you are quite right. And now there is a revival of electron microscopy because of, the, of this possibility to, to, to cut it in a thin slices in automatic way. There is there are machines that that is cutting, it scanning its sample, and then reconstructing the 3D 3D uh, image. This is okay. electron microscopy tomography than this yeah. than this way. Yeah, and that of course gives much better resolution. And the question is then that, that well, the question is that. Most of the physical questions you are asking is that you have a sample, you are subjected to some force, and you are measuring your response. And as far as I can understand, in the biology, the force which you apply has a tremendously wide spectrum. So the response, measuring the response with the precise resolution, is of course extremely interesting from the point of view of basic physics but hardly relevant to the physical problem. It's like, I, mean, I think if Feynman said that uh, it's not the best way to look for the Lyman series of hitting an anvil with a hammer. 
<laughs> yeah. Right. So that's yeah, why. Sure. That's what we are doing in the biology. You are exactly <laughs> right. You are exactly right. This. So this is this is this is mostly used to just to do some presentations uh, if we have some students coming to, and then to... Well, it's extremely fantastic it's physics. Just, yeah, but, <laughs> but just in, in, in your real life nobody likes when you very little the, the people using that. Around, uh, our project, the idea is to infect uh, those mice with viruses which uh, effectively will deliver this uh, fluorescence uh, molecules to send certain neurons. And uh, in order to confirm that this uh, line of animals has been created properly, we need to see it. That they, they are there, and if we just illuminate with the light, they will emit. And that must be visible, so it is done by optical microscope. Just to show you... To confirm this. Uh, success somehow of this breathing of something. It's what we recently what we recently published is that this staining uh, is not so innocent as uh, as everybody usually is uh, expecting. So we were we were staining up oh, it doesn't uh, um, Time is running, so maybe yeah. opening a new thread is not the best idea at this point. Yeah, just, just, just a final comment. Yeah, that we know, we all are sure. Yeah, that's the final comment that we stand with, with, with the, 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 the nuclei with, 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 with conventional Thor or GFP, and we found that the, the staining changes completely the, 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 the nuclear structure. So, 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 so the observation influences the sound. Which we know since maybe 100 years. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much.